don't know. Hey, oh, don't give them any money. Why? Because they're gonna use it for drugs and alcohol. Oh yeah, not like not like us, right? Maybe the difference is, is that they have families here. They have something neurochemical or whatever that keeps them from doing it. Yeah, but we all make choices. You're goddamn right. We all make choices. And some of us are saved from our choices by the people around us and by the circumstances. And just by traits that we have and just by, by, by talents and gifts that we have. Why do some people rise up to challenges and other people fall down in front of them? I don't know. Why are some of you able to, to persevere through, through some very difficult times, and yet some of you collapse and cry because someone uses the wrong pronoun? I don't know. But there's something that's in there. The only thing that's wrong with how your life turns out is if you end up hating it, that's all. But think about the things that you dream about. And the things that you dream about, I mean, my God, you're right. Like your reach should exceed your grasp, right? Otherwise, what's heaven for? The whole point of it is to dream something that's beyond what you can actually reach. But if you if you if you do that, you're gonna get you're gonna, you're gonna exceed what you otherwise would have, and you're gonna get way farther than you otherwise would have. But you see how the dream is gonna propel your motivation. If you don't dream about much, of course you're not motivated because. Why would you possibly want to try to improve yourself? What are the, what are the chances that there's going to be opportunities? And you wonder why opportunities never quite reach you when you're just sitting in the exact same place because you're not moving forward. If you don't know where you're going, man, any road's going to take you there. Just get on a road and start going. What are you going to find? I don't know, but I want to hear about it because whatever you find is going to be way different from what I have found. How do you motivate yourself? Dream of something, man, and dream about something that, that you that, that you can't go to sleep at night without thinking about. And hopefully that will motivate you to, 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 to propel yourself and put yourself into, into something. Once in a while, you just might, you just might grasp that heaven that you, that you reached for. It's interesting that you began with the activist type because I've heard a lot of screaming from the activist types today about, um, about what's going on in, in Israel and in Palestine. And they're talking about how, about uh, collective guilt being a war crime or collective punishment being a war crime. That's the exact same thing that they advocate though. Collective punishment or collective guilt for descendants. This is the thing about those, about those philosophies like that. They don't intend to be, to be coherent and to be, and to be logical. In fact, it's designed to sow confusion. Be very, very, very careful. Be very, very um, cautious and, and examine philosophies, ideologies, political systems that are designed to confuse you. If they say, well, there are these two contradictory things and they want you to hold both at the same time, there's a reason they want you to hold both positions at the same time. They don't want you to have a logical foundation because if they can get you to believe logical fallacies, believe in logical fallacies, they can get you to behave in almost any way. If you believe that there's some group that's responsible for the, for the failures in your life, well, that's, it is, it's a shortcut to thinking. It is easier. And is it, is it true that, that people are oppressed? Yeah, of course. Can you name a group that's not? Can you name a person that's not? And there's this tendency to treat people as though they're members of groups. And I was asking a, a, a class last year. Um, when I was 15, I got I got jumped by some by, by four people. I'm sorry, five people. No, there were like 10 of them, right? Uh, I got jumped by five people who um, jumped me specifically because I was white. One of them hit me with a baseball bat. I was pissing blood because it hit me in the kidney if I go like a week or two. So do I come in here and say they were Mexicans and they specifically said they were doing it because I was white because I didn't belong in the neighborhood? So do I come in here now and say? You guys are all guilty because I'm sure some way, somehow, you must be responsible for that in some way because you're connected. And my class very adamantly, that's racist. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's kind of the definition of it, isn't it? But it's a shortcut to thinking. Is it, It's a way of being able to, to, I mean, first off, I mean, call it what it is. Where I grew up, man, I, you don't belong here. I, I would have liked for that to be true. I wish I didn't belong there. I wish I belonged like one of the richer neighborhoods. I really wish I did, but unfortunately I did not. But, it's the, it, but there's this tendency to try to defend that kind of territory. It's not about the territory. It's about 
wanting to exclude people because then of course it 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 almost alleviates responsibility. Like if I came across any of those guys today, I wonder how many of them are alive, how many of them are in jail, I wonder what they're doing today. And I wonder if any of them, even collectively, have, have done a fraction of what I've done. And we came from the same place, literally. We you know, grew up blocks from each other. And that's the hard thing, is we have to try to, to, to reconcile that. But what I was going to say was, is it true that, 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 that some people are oppressed? Yeah, of course. Groups, individuals, of course. So I guess the question is now, what are you going to do with that fact? Are you going to spend your whole life trying to, to undo an, an entire system, which, let's face it, we hear it all the time, like, oh, it's the systems, it's the systems. But any of us even understand the systems? The systems are so vast and deep and complex that they've been built up for such an incredibly long time. But the fact of the matter is that you have to deal with, you have to live with the life that you presently inhabit. And at some point, we have to give up our hope for a better past. And we can complain all we want, and complaining about your problems, and complaining about your station in life, and complaining about your status, and complaining about the past, is about as effective as, as chewing bubble gum to try to solve an algebra equation. There's no connection whatsoever. But can you improve your situation? Well, it depends on your outlook. What are you? Are you an individual? Or have you given up all of your individuality? to join the herd and say, I'm part of this group instead. Because if you've joined a group, well, dude, your, your group is screwed, man. I mean, you're screwed. Is there any group in, 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 the, in the world that we can look at and say even racially or ethnically, collectively, that kind of like deserves better than what they're getting? And I was like, you know, I, 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 heard, I heard people scream and shout all about racism, about slavery. Well, who sold the slaves to the Europeans? There's a reason if you look at Africa, why? You ever look at a map of Africa? <clears throat> I know the answer is no, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. You ever look at a map of Africa and wonder, why is it that north of the Sahara, it's all Christian? I'm sorry, it's, it's all, it's all um, Muslim? And south of the Sahara, it's all Christian? Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason for it is tied specifically to the slave trade. Because there's, a, there's an edict in Islam, you cannot enslave another Muslim. So when the Muslim missionaries went into Africa, they didn't, go into, they didn't go south of the Sahara because that's where all the slaves were taken from. Slaves were taken from North Africa. They went into North Africa. That's why when you look at a map of Africa today, Egypt, Morocco, that's why they're all Muslim today. But the Christians, if they went into those areas, they were killed by the Muslims. So instead, they went into to South Saharan Africa. And that's why, that, that's why South Saharan Africa, if you look at the countries today, if you look at their religious breakdowns, they're mostly Christian because it was okay to enslave a Christian, but not a Muslim. You know that, what, what is it, 90% of all the slaves that were taken out of Africa didn't even come to the US. They went into South America. You all are a bunch of racists, huh? Here's the difference. In South, South America, they worked them in mostly on sugar plantations where it was very humid, lots of mosquitoes, and they just died. But sugar is so profitable, they would just work slaves to death and then buy new ones. I'll show, you, I'll show you a map later on. It's really fascinating. Some of you may have seen it before. It's, it's a map of the world. It's like little dots that represent all of the slave ships. If you've ever seen that time elapse thing, it's incredible. When you look at every dot that goes past the screen, I'll show it to you before today's over. And you can see how many slave ships went. And then you realize that it's easy for us to even say like, oh, they were Africans. Dude, Africa's a continent, man. It wasn't just a continent. Okay, even if you went, okay, fine. They were from South Africa. Dude, every single ship on there had hundreds of human beings, like just like you, with loves and hates and passion and families, things they cared about. They had complaints. One of them may have been sitting there one day just like, I hate mosquitoes. Can this day get any worse? And all of a sudden, people showed up to capture them to sell them off as slaves. And they were, they were people from a tribe right next door, looked just like them. Had to, probably had the exact same language. And you're just like, oh, good, some friends of mine. <laughs> Maybe, and then, then they, they, they capture them and sell them into, slave, into, into slavery. How come everybody else gets a free pass on it? And we know why. You know, because it's easier just to, it's a shortcut to thinking. You know, again, we tend to think of like, oh, the Africans, dude, it's not even just continental. Every ship had a human being on it, man. Like, the whole life. You ever think about it like that? Just the sheer humanity of the individuals? who suffer from these things? 
If you want to talk about the tragedy of those things, stop thinking about the macro level. What's going to piss you off and, and really get you, not even piss off, but maybe even emotionally understanding of people is if you can break it down to the individual in the ship. There's a, imagine yourself just sitting on a ship. Well, this sucks. And then there's a couple hundred of you. And then there are thousands of ships that go over the course of a couple centuries. There's those are individual lives. And we tend to just kind of collectivize those things. And then there's been this tendency, especially since the Enlightenment, to individualize us. It's about the individual, the, the, the single individual and their, and their individual rights and their individual worth as humans. It's like, it's such a weird thing. If I come in here and one person is misbehaving, I go, that's it, you're all paying for it. You're all staying after class. What a tyrant, what a terrible human being. Why, what's wrong with that? I'm treating you as a collection, right? Second period. It's horrible, we know this intuitively. <clears throat> we still get, we get upset about it, but we have no problem doing that to other groups of people because it is hard to treat people as individuals. It is difficult. One of the worst things about it one of the absolute worst things about it is that now we have to start caring about individuals. You know, like homeless people. You ever look at a homeless person, and you're like, oh, oh, homeless people. A group. You do the thing where you <laughs> lock your doors, you're sitting there, you know, because there's this rash of homeless people opening up car doors or something. I don't know. But what's worse is if you ever, you ever, you ever make eye contact with one of them? Oh. Make eye contact with a human being, with one of them, you're gonna find out something. They have eyes like humans. And you might be able to see something in their eyes, like emotions and feelings. And then if that happens, it might occur to you that that's someone's son or daughter. And then if that happens, it might occur to you that at some point they were sitting in the same desks as us, that they had the same ambitions and hopes as the rest of us. And what put them there? I don't know. Does it matter? What put you, what keeps you away from being there? I don't know. Oh, don't give them any money. Why? Because they're going to use it for drugs and alcohol. Oh, yeah, not like, not like us, right? <laughs> Maybe the difference is, is that they have families or they have something neurochemical or whatever that keeps them from doing it. Yeah, but we all make choices. You're goddamn right. We all make choices. And some of us are saved from our choices by the people around us and by the circumstances and just by traits that we have and just by, by, by talents and gifts that we have. Why do some people rise up to challenges and other people fall down in front of them? I don't know. Why are some of you able to, to persevere through, through some very difficult times, and yet some of you collapse and cry because someone uses the wrong pronoun? I don't know. But there's something that's in there. And largely, is it a choice? I don't know, man. But what I do know is that if we collectivize it, it's easy to make fun of groups, if I bring, if I, we, I, can, I can tell you some, some jokes right now about homeless people, and I bring one in here right now. <laughs> tell them what I told you. Tell them the jokes. And we'd be like, oh, I, I can't do that. <laughs> Why not? Why not? He's right here in front of him, and he's just, come on. He's not done yet. Kick him. Kick him while he's down. Let's finish this guy off. Let's get him off the bridge. Oh, that's messed up, Scanlon. But we'll lock the door on him. <laughs> you know? From an hour ago, you were gonna say. Um, I I had a, a little bit of a, of a different take than everybody else. I I. Only been two of us. <laughs> everybody. That's all of us. It's like when someone walks in the room and they're like, "Oh, nobody's here." <laughs> Go ahead. I took it more as like us as humans find a lot of similarities and a lot of patterns and things and in people and I noticed that I like you said it's a lot more easier to just find the pattern in another person than to look at them as their own uh, individual mm -hmm. so the same thing with um, actually I use a different term I like a different terminology um, my, my example was I, a lot of people tend to do this. I had a food when I was a kid. You had a what? A food. Okay. Like a certain food when I was a kid okay. that just happened to be made wrong and I got food poisoning because of it and now I can't eat that food anymore. And I judge, I judge that certain food by that one experience that I had. So I generalize it and I'm like, oh, well I can't eat that anymore. I don't like it anymore. 
even though the food is really good, I just can't have it anymore. Well, I think that's how people, we unintentionally or intentionally do that to other humans. Like, oh, we had a bad experience with Mexican people, so I hate Mexican people now. And if we find the patterns in people that they might be the same, uh, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they might be the same as the one in the um, bad experience that we had. That's what I kind of took out of it. If you know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, I like that. That might be one of the best explanations I've ever heard. It's like bad food. You have me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Any of you guys have that, like a food that you had one time and it's ruined it for you forever and ever? Um, I can't remember what brand it is, but it's the kettle cooked chips, jalapeno. Oh, I love those things, man. And one day I ate some and I got food poisoning. Oh, it, it couldn't have even been from the chips. There's nothing in there that can give you food poisoning. But I haven't had them since, man. And I love those things. Yeah. I could, you know, what would be the rational thing to do? Go buy a bag of them, eat them, get over it. You know, but the thing is, is that there's a lot of different brands of chips on the, on the shelf. I don't really eat chips anyway. So it's easy for me to justify not fixing that problem. But with people, man, we don't have that choice because we're everywhere. You know, I could, I could walk in here and I could see a bunch of individuals. It's one of the reasons that in the very beginning, I asked you guys those letters of introduction. And what do I do with those letters of introduction? I have notes on all of them. I, I, I take, as, as I read them, I, I take notes on them and I put them in my computer. And then I look at them once in a while. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's what that, okay, this person is into this or the person's into that. Because it helps me to help, it helps me to make analogies. It helps me to give examples of things in class. If I can maybe know something about you, then I can, you know, if there's like 10 people in here who are into soccer. Um, I can, it can help me to give an analogy about soccer, I don't know. Let's say I knew anything about soccer at all. It'd be helpful for that kind of a thing. So I can walk in here with, my, with the letters of introduction in my head and treat you guys as those letters of introduction. Or I can come in here and treat you guys as a bunch of bags of, of, of kettle cooked jalapeno chips. That's what I take from that. I like that. Yeah. But one thing I will say is that I'm genuinely not surprised by how people turn out. I can see it. I love you guys, man, but most of you are gonna turn out to be average. Of course, and there's nothing wrong with average. The only thing wrong with average is when we hate the fact that we're average. And then the funny thing is that as you get older, you might look back and go, you know what? Just want a quiet life. Just want to have the normal life. And that's, the, and that's a fine thing. The only thing that's wrong with how your life turns out is if you end up hating it, that's all. But think about the things that you dream about. And the things that you dream about, I mean, my God, your, like your reach should exceed your grasp, right? Otherwise, what's heaven for? The whole point of it is to dream something that's beyond what you can actually reach. But if you, if you, if you do that, you're gonna, get, you're, gonna, you're gonna exceed what you otherwise would have. And you're gonna get way farther than you otherwise would have. Now, the problem is with, uh, with many of us is that two things, we, 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 we don't dream big enough and we don't prepare nearly enough. That's all it is, so I guess it makes sense if we don't dream much. But you see how the dream is gonna propel your motivation. If you don't dream about much, of course you're not motivated because why would you possibly want to try to improve yourself? What are the, what are the chances that there's gonna be opportunities? After all, you know they, them, the ones, they're against you and they hate you and they'll never give you opportunities anyway. And you wonder why opportunities never quite reach you when you're just sitting in the exact same place because you're not moving forward. If you don't know where you're going, man, any road's gonna take you there. Just get on a road and start going. What are you gonna find? I don't know, but I wanna hear about it. Because whatever you find is gonna be way different from what I have found. And so, how do you motivate yourself? Dream of something, man, and dream about something that, that, you, that, that you can't go to sleep at night without thinking about. And hopefully that will motivate you to, to to, to propel yourself and put yourself into, into something. It's like I was talking last night to uh, a class and, and I was saying, bless you. Bless you. Did not tell them bless you. 
I was telling them, like, imagine what you do if you just, like, take a month, take a month, find something and pour yourself into it. And I mean, like, really pour yourself into it. Don't just think about it. Really, like, direct all of your efforts towards something. I don't care what it is. Running, um, I don't know, weight loss, um, studying, um, I don't, uh, I don't know, cleaning your room, find something and just propel your, and, and, and completely commit yourself to something. And you're gonna be amazed what you can do with just one month towards something. Now imagine if you really, if you really aimed at something big and propelled yourself towards that. And if you can accomplish something big in a month, now think about, huh, I guess I really could do something with my life. And now you can start dreaming about much, much bigger things. And then once in a while, you may, I don't know, maybe you're that Elon Musk who says, you know what we should do? You know, someone's like, man, Elon, you should make rockets that go to the moon. I mean, how many of us even want to make rockets? And then Elon's like, no, I'm going to make rockets that go to Mars. Well, that's a bit too much. Once in a while, you just might, you just might grasp that heaven that you, that you reached for. But you won't unless you aim for it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?